Welcome back to Vernon House Behind the Walls. If you've been tuning in for our journey to date, you've seen the consultants go literally behind the walls and beneath the floorboards to learn about the history of the Vernon House. And in today's episode, you're gonna see them dig into the archival resources, the maps, the deeds, the letters, to learn what they can find out about the house from those sources. An important part of uh, any investigation of a building is the historical development, uh, its origins, uh, who lived in it, who built it. Um, as historians, uh, we're just, we don't want to just have a date for the building. We want to know uh, who built it, why they built it, how they lived in the building, and so forth. So that's, that's, the, that's the, the purpose of this. Physical investigation is only one part of this process. Uh, we've already talked about that in the past, but an important component of that uh, is the documentary record. You know, here's an interesting deed that's written on parchment. There's lots of different records that we've consulted. The Newport Historical Society has a very large collection of the Vernon family papers. Uh, some are also uh, uh, stored at the Redwood Library. So we've spent some time there and we'll spend considerable more time. Account books, correspondence, uh, deeds, and so forth. Here's a folder that contains uh, letters from 1782 to 1792 between uh, William Vernon and his son. After Rochambeau and the French left Newport, uh, they had to repair the house. And so William's in Boston and he's giving instructions to his son Samuel, who's taking, managing the repairs. And those revealed some information that we had no idea of. And that was that the house contained uh, what they called a turret or a cupola on the roof. Uh, it's much like we see on the colony house. Uh, this was unknown until this was found in a letter. This research project was huge. You know, they're both the physical investigation and this very rich documentary record, so we needed assistance. A student at Roger Williams University at the Historic Preservation Program had written her honors thesis on William Vernon and his involvement in the slave trade. And she came to the house and we learned that uh, she had done this research uh, and we enlisted her to uh, work with us. The whole point of a historic structure support is that it's a tool for whoever owns the building to be able to understand it in its entirety. And when you're dealing with a building that's as significant as the Vernon House, you want to know what happened here. You want to know about the people who lived here. We did get to go to uh, like Newport Historical Society where some of the um, Vernon papers were, and then we also went to Newport City Hall, where they still have a lot of like the probate records and things like that. This is a historic period when there were written records generated of many different varieties, whether they were by the church, by the uh, town, uh, by courts. Uh, all of that kind of information uh, is possibly available to us. So this was a map that was drawn by Ezra Stiles in 1758. Uh, what he did, he was the uh, pastor at the Second Congregational Church, and it was the church that the Vernons actually attended. They were members of that church. Um, a lot of the Newport elites were. And so essentially what Ezra Stiles did is he walked around Newport, and he drew up all the streets, and he had a very interesting key where he would actually make notations, very simple notations, about the houses and about the neighborhoods. Um, and so little symbols like twos or ones, S's, uh, symbols with slashes through it would tell you different things about the house. Um, and so this one is, right now I have it zoomed in looking at uh, the corner of Mary and Clark Street. And so you can see where the Vernon house is, uh, there's a two on there, no slash through it. So essentially what that tells us is that the Vernon house was a two-story house when this was drawn in 1758 and it had only one chimney, which is very different than what it is now because now we have two chimneys uh, as opposed to the central one that you would have expected to see. Through those kind of records, uh, we can under begin to understand sort of the historic evolution of the building, combining that with our physical investigation, uh, uh, which adds a lot. 
the value of these early records is some of those rooms that were described were taken off the building, were removed in 1759-60 when the east half of the house was built. So uh, that physical evidence, uh, hidden, some of it is still hidden behind the walls. We've discovered some of it, but those parts of the building are gone. And I think what the Historic Structures Report does is that it allows us to look at, yes, what has to get done physically to the building so that we can preserve that history, but then how do we interpret that history? How do we share that history with the general public? How do you um, make sure that all those voices are represented? Thank you for joining us on our journey to learn about the Vernon House, and thank you to all of our generous funders who have made this project possible.